So, dear audience, tell me, why Japanese so scary? And I asked this, the reason I asked this, uh, these Japanese, they are very unique amongst the Asians, you know, they can switch between the Bushido samurai feudal society uh, and then within uh, maybe 50 or 60 years industrialize and become highly efficient, adaptive, industrial society, determined and fanatical nationalists. And then with the help of a few uh, bombs, uh, become a cute anime girl Sony TV Toyota car. It's very strange. But remember, still not sorry for Nanking. In terms of capacity to take over the world, I think uh, the Japanese are up there with the Prussians and the German Reich. If only they had not tried to take the forbidden Hawaiian pizza that was Pearly Harbor. Maybe they still control Korea, Manchuria, China, or even greater part of Asia to this day. But what is it that makes the Japanese uh, so special? The culture, it is so foreign to anything else in the world, even neighbors, uh, China and Korea. And to me, this is very strange because we know Japan must be related in some way to Korea or even China. In fact, they even transplant early government uh, during the uh, the 500s and I think even into the, uh, the 1000s. They take a lot from China. This is something I've been reading. And uh, I want to uh, take some time to explain to you, also as part of my own learning, uh, what this is and what is going on with these, uh, these people, the land of the uh, red dot, white flag. The origin of the Japanese cultural and belief system, I think, a large amount of this is originating as implant from China, comparatively more advanced in the second quarter of the common era, the 500s, and a few centuries after. As I will discuss many ideologies and cultural systems imported from China, many will not know this, but before made in PRC, People's Republic of China stamped on plastic toys that was made in Imperial China and some of their cultural exports were very good. I will take a minute to read excerpt from book by George Samson, actually a very good book compared to others like Cambridge History of Japan, which very detailed, but uh, too much detailed, honestly. Uh, but uh, yes, continuing with the book, uh, History of Japan to 1334, explaining how Japanese climate shaped the people. Here, here it, is, it is. Because the arc formed by the Japanese island stretches from high latitudes not far from the Arctic zone down to the subtropical latitudes, it presents a variety of climates, but the most thickly populated and most productive parts of Japan enjoy a climate that is genial and on the whole stimulating. Summers are hot, winters are cold, but there are no unbearable extremes. There is plenty of sunshine, plenty of rain. The land is clothed with luxuriant vegetation decorated with shapely trees and lovely blossoms and leavened by quick water. Nowhere in the world are there more enchanting landscapes among the hills, across the plains and by the sea. It is a land suited to breed a vigorous race of men and women happy in their surroundings. Yet it is a country that hides poverty behind a smiling face. The very features that make for a natural beauty are often signs of infertile places. Three-fourths of the land area is hill, and the mountain terrain unfit for the cultivation of necessary food crops. And although much sloping ground is tilled thanks to laborious terracing and embarking, total area under cultivation is less than one-sixth of the area of the whole country. And to contrast with the Greeks, again from the book, Historically, in the name of European civilization, in the Greek archipelago, architecture was severely limited by the configuration of the land and by the hot, rainless summer. Here, there was no possibility of increasing the area of arable land, and from very early times, the Greeks, for lack of grains, were obliged to seek subsistence in colonization and foreign trade. One second, one second, my friends, I must take drink. Mm. Mm, corona. The book series on Japan by Samson is actually the best one I've read so far, uh, much better than Dry Cambridge History or one by Marius Jansen, which never contain any dates as he discuss, which is very annoying. Constantly I'm looking Google for dates when reading Jansen, but overall the uh, book is okay. Uh, I, will, I will put uh, these, these names in the description. But uh, So again from book. Thus, from high antiquity, the Japanese people were accustomed to a simple and frugal existence in surroundings agreeable to the eye. 
Thereby, it is pleasant to suppose they learned the art of living without the multiplicity of possessions, and from such conditions there arose that love of natural beauty and deeply rooted aesthetic tradition which seems to be their natural heritage. It was fortunate for them that they were able to cultivate the arts of peace, free from the threat of invasion, for although Japan shares many characteristics with other countries in the monsoon region, this is, this is the... Uh, this is the kind of, uh, uh, how you say, like a typhoon area. This uh, whole place from Southeast Asia up to, uh, I think, Sakhalin, this uh, place in Siberia. Her, her situation is somewhat remote. Japan's situation somewhat remote. Uh, then he talks about currents of Japan's sea and how hard and dangerous to sail to her from mainland. But we know that isolation can induce very unique features of culture and religion, especially in the case of e Egypt, which was which was very different to other civilizations like Mesopotamia and Sumer of its time, due to the large expanse of desert to cross. Uh, in terms of crossing this ocean, I think uh, someone actually found out there was a notable uh, expedition uh, by uh, Mongols, the, uh, the noodle pirates, in the 1200s, but I will talk about that in a bit. So Samson emphasizes the favorable climate with abundant natural beauty, but poor soil and general frugality, almost Spartan austerity and aestheticism of Japan that encourages mindset of making more with less. They did not have the abundance that uh, favor materialistic mindset. So taking a step back, uh, I think uh, so we, we should take a, a minute to have a look at the uh, imperial uh, legend, the house, uh, the legend of the imperial house, excuse me. Uh, it emerged from the hostile takeover of Japanese home islands that lasted more or less from, uh, I think, uh, uh, 300 BC into the 18th century when they fully subjugated the indigenous Ainu peoples. This is Ainu, not, not Ainul. Then a hostile takeover of itself as clans fought for military supremacy until unification after the Battle of Sakigahara. Uh, these indigenous people of Japan, uh, these uh, Ainu or Jomon, uh, it's, it's quite the subject in uh, and of itself. I don't want to touch so much on the subject of uh, Ainu as the records are not so good. Uh, they are really, really not good, actually. This is, uh, this is what I have noticed uh, researching this subject. And I think also they are probably suppressed by Japanese yayoi, dominated academia, the uh, single island mafia. At one point, I did wonder if Jomon peoples had provided some kind of genetic contribution to the Japanese, which differentiate them from mainland Asian people, but I think this is uh, not the case. The Jomon were treated like any other native peoples whose land is colonized. If they cannot organize to repel the invaders, they are subjugated to varying extents of brutality. I think there was some degree of integration. Uh, I think we certainly see the features of these Jomon and some Japanese, the Japanese that have the, how you say, the softer eyelid, the uh, double eyelid, I think it is called. Uh, some of these Japanese people, they don't look so Asian, like they have, uh, yes, the double eyelid and wider eyes. Uh, maybe this is the Jomon genetic contribution, who knows, but I have not actually taken the time to dig so much into this, but I think there was some degree of integration certainly more integration than the Australian Aborigines had with the European settlers uh, of Australia. Uh, these Jomon, actually, they, uh, they were notable for something else as well. Uh, the first shogun or samurai warrior type uh, generals of Japan emerged as a result of fighting with the Ainu in the first millennium AD. I will touch on this later as well. So to give you a chronological timeline, to give you a kind of context here, let us uh, break down the Japanese history into these the official periods first. We have the Jomon period from 1400 BC to, uh, sorry, 14,000, I mean, <laughs> it's a bit longer than 1400, yes, to 300 BC, named after the Jomon Rupa pattern on pottery artifacts made by first Ainu peoples. But I think the Jomon and Ainu, I think this is fairly uh, inter interchangeable. Then we have the Yayoi period, uh, the, the guys from, uh, I think, uh, Korea and China. This period, uh, Yayoi 300 BC, 250 AD. Then we have uh, Kofun period, uh, 250 to 550 AD. I think still very tribal Kofun period. Uh, they were building these uh, burial mounds uh, around this time. So very basic, you know. Uh, and then we have Asuka period. Asuka. Asuka, bleed. 
yeah, Asuka period, 550 to 700 AD, Haiyan, 800 to 1200 AD, and Kamakura, Kamaka no, not Kamakaze, Kamakura, 1200 to 1300 AD, and Murumachi, 1300 to 1600, and then Edo period, 1600 to 1868. But I think that our interest into what to make the Japanese people, I think this more or less will come to an end at the Sakigahara, at the end of Murumachi in 1600 AD. Uh, yes, I think this point, uh, the, the culture of Japan had solidified, the concrete had set. So starting at the German period, uh, yes, 13,000, uh, say, to uh, uh, whatever was uh, 300 BC. Uh, supposedly these guys, they cross over from Siberia, uh, these uh, Eurasian hunter-gatherers. This is what these German people were. They, they were actually quite basic. They, they did not have particularly advanced civilization, as, as, I, as I thought before I start to research. So they think they come over from around Sakhalin. Siberia and cross over into northern Japan. Hokkaido by Kuril Land Bridge, while sea level was shallow, very low, uh, until maybe 6000 BC. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, since the last ice age, uh, 12,000 years ago, sea level has risen maybe 140 meters. This is the estimate, 130 to 140 meters, which does raise the question of you know some of these places like Atlantis. With uh, such a high level of, of sea rise, there's something that uh, Joe Rogan friend, Graham Hancock, always going on about, always yap, 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 yap. Uh, he say, you know, if, uh, if, if the sea level rise so much, how we don't know ancient civilization under the sea? And I think this, this, is, a, this is a good point. Uh, we would never find them if they're under the seabed. Uh, and of course, uh, civilizations where they tend to build, they tend to build near the, the ocean, yes, where they can trade and make the boat. Uh, so I think this is an interesting point, but uh, we can never prove it either way because we are not going to be dredging the seafloor looking for these uh, civilizations that are, you know, possibly tens of thousands of years. I mean, the, the, I think you might even need to be dredging quite deep too, not just scratching the surface. But uh, yes, uh, anyway, anyway, so, so uh, this, the Sea of Japan, uh, when this uh, sea level was low, there was land bridge uh, going from, uh, 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 where's this place, I forget, north of China, you know, Siberia kind of thing, crossover from there to Hokkaido. Uh, and and they, they live here and they do the hunter and the gathering, you know. Uh, Hokkaido is actually a special word for me because I have a very nice spider, Hokkaido abyss. Ski jacket, expensive, too too much, I think, actually, but very pretty with dark blue shell and uh, magma color zip and interior make look like hot magma. So here uh, is a nice place in Japan, good skiing, but uh, poor visibility. I think one day I will visit. But uh, yes, anyway, uh, Doman period, I think not so important. Uh, next, Yayoi period, I think also not, not so important either. Up until 250 AD, this, you know, these, these Korean, the Chinese, they come over, I think maybe on boat or a piece of wood, they float, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows too much. Uh, it's very basic time, not much to note. It seems like ambitious, but not particularly wealthy people from Korea, uh, Manchuria, Northeast China, they ship over to Japan looking for some free clay. Not much else to say, really. Uh, Japan's still very irrelevant at this point. Uh, primitive, uh, you know, uh, not even Bronze Age, really. I don't think that they were making a lot of bronze. That was what they were doing in China. I think the metallurgy was still very much held by the uh, Chinese. Uh, but it was undoubtedly a shamanistic uh, ruled tribal society. But uh, as we begin to move on, we move the wheels of the history here. Uh, we have the Kofan period from 300 to 500 AD, named after strange keyhole shaped burial mound megaliths. This, uh, when Japan starts, uh, you know, growing from shamanistic tribes to uh, trying to do single government with uh, uh, Chinese systems and ideas. I think uh, they, they, they go over to China, I think 500 AD, I think, to uh, try and learn from, uh, from China. Uh, and I think here we, we, we start to see some actual civilization indicating a unique Japanese culture uh, with sedentary agriculture. Uh, something I did not mention with these, these Jomon is uh, the, these Ainu people is is that they, uh, according to Cambridge History of Japan, if you can trust these Cambridge people, I don't know, but uh, these uh, these Ainu people, they, they actually live a lot on, uh, on acorns. They lived a lot on uh, tree nuts. 
Uh, they did not have these kind of domesticated crops. They had to rely on, on nuts and uh, seasonal uh, produce and, and hunting. Uh, and uh, this, I think, was very good in, in some parts of the, uh, the, how you say, the, the maybe before the 6000 uh, BC. But then uh, climate change happened and they have to move down to the oceans. Uh, where there is more game, I think uh, it wasn't too clear actually in in the book why this was, but uh, the climate change forced the migration. I think is is very common. Uh, I think uh, as much as I despise these carbohydrate heavy diets, however, I believe that without certainty of food source, the development of higher culture is not possible. We must have a nobility and priestly class who can afford to lounge around, think, paint, uh, you know, do the tea ceremony for this to develop. And actually, I think I would be a good candidate for this. I think if there is, uh, if we need the new nobility, yes, I will volunteer for this role. I will make sacrifice. Uh, so going back to the Kofun period, uh, this is interesting because they're not actually allowed to dig. This, this mound, the Imperial Household Agency, as they are called, these guys, this government agency looking after the uh, royal family, they actually prevent archaeology investigating of these co-fun megalithic mounds. And I think this is a, a rare thing. I cannot think of any other country that prevents archaeology studies of ancient rulers' uh, burial uh, mounds. Uh, certainly Egypt does not. Uh, remember, officially, in Japan, that the emperor was meant to stop being divine after World War II when Japan did the surrender in 1945, but actually I think they only joking on this point. Empire of Sun will rise again once pesky America goes away. So this imperial family, uh, Yamato, yeah, Yama, Yam, not Yamamoto, Yamato, uh, battleship Yamato, I think maybe ring a bell for you if you watch any anime manga named after Yamato. This uh, also the center of first unified state of Japan. Uh, and when I say unified state, I do not mean all of Japan. I mean unified state of small part of Japan around the middle. Uh, uh, so around this uh, this 500 AD that Japan, they start to talk with the China and they start getting the recognition. And this was a kind of big thing for Japan, you know, being the backwater frontier because China had been around for quite a long time. China, uh, possibly going back to 1400 BC, according to the Communist Party, it goes back much longer, but uh, I think Communist Party, I, I, I have no reason to distrust them. I think they are very honest. Yes, wouldn't you agree? China Communist Party never lie, right? Anyway, so China had uh, already warring states period from 450 BC to 250 BC, and by 500 AD was well-established civilization in the eastern half of China. Uh, this beer, this is a very good, actually, you know, Corona beer, it has little, uh, it almost has little aroma of, uh, how you say, uh, this, uh, this, this cannabis plant, I smell it sometimes, uh, it's, it, it's kind of interesting in the beer, no other beer has this kind of aroma, I think it comes from the, the hops, whatever they use, maybe that, maybe that they're not using hops, maybe they're using marijuana, I hope not, I'm feeling okay, hopefully I do not start, uh, losing my head here. But anyway, where, where was I? Yes, uh, China had uh, already had warring states period from 450 BC to 250 BC, and by 500 AD it was uh, well established. Uh, so these yayoi, these uh, these uh, I think Koreans, Northeast Chinese, they saw the good stuff going on in Chinatown, and they wanted to model their new unified state on the Chinese model. They needed a, a kind of precedent, you know. I mean, if you want to start something, if you want to tell the the peasants, yes, I am king. You must worship me. Uh, you need some kind of ideology to kind of back you up, some sort of philosophies, uh, governmental, you know, system to build your new government. So they they went uh, the the Yamato family. They thought, oh yes, maybe this would be a good idea if we take from China. So uh, they adopt uh, a few things. The the key ones is uh, this uh, Taoism, uh, this uh, Confucianism, and uh, the Buddhism. Uh, between the 500 and the 800 AD, these uh, Chinese imported ideas, they, they really play a big role in shaping Japan. But uh, it's, it's quite confusing, you know, I mean, if you were to ask me what exactly is the Taoism, uh, I, I, I forget, I, I read, but I forget, I, I think it related to Confucianism, you know, obviously Confucianism, the origin of word confused. So I think, I think, okay, to get confused here. Uh, but uh, I think more or less uh, it's a system of like morals and uh, and values and the reasoning, and of course Buddhism being like a more how you say like a spiritual system. 
um, Taoism, I forget what this one is, is something. But uh, we also have the, the indigenous religion, and I think this one is important, this, uh, this Kami Shinto. It's, it's rather confusing, actually. Uh, but the, the, the Kami Shinto, I think, is, is the kind of this worship of spirits, and they incorporate with the Buddhism. Uh, but the Shinto religion, I think, is, is, uh, is adopted from this tribal kind of belief. And where this come from, I, they are not sure. I tried to dig, but it became very speculative. So I more or less give up. I say this is the religion of the land. They have this, the spirits whisper to them in their sleep to call it uh, Kami, Kami uh, Shinto. But uh, yes, anyway, back to the, the Yamato ruling family decided to start mixing the Shinto shamanism and the Buddhism around the 500s. So this was kind of, you know, take a little bit of familiar and add a little bit of the spice from China. This added credibility to the imperial family lore, you know, like uh, in, in the video game, the lore, but uh, for, for real life. So uh, to make them seem special, to, so you could tell the peasants, yes, I am ruler of you because, look, I have this book here and it says that you are stupid and I am smart and God make me uh, love me too, love me more than you. And uh, so I rule over you and uh, get back to the rice paddies. Uh, yes, uh, this was a common thing, actually. Uh, if you go and read the history of uh, ancient religious ideas, you will see that uh, this is very common, especially around the Levant and the uh, Near East, uh, where the, uh, the invaders, uh, they would mix their religion with the more typically more established, uh, well-written religion of those that they were invading. Uh, especially around uh, Mesopotamia, uh, Canaan, Levant, Anatolia, etc., in the millennium preceding the Roman Empire. 